Hey guys, my name's Tyler. I'm helping Sarah out currently with some extra materials for you guys. So I thought it'd be cool to do a walkthrough of the simulation playground. Now, currently I have a slide up for you that basically is what you need to know for the simulation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just pause for a second. Go feel free to pause and read through everything. And then I'll be, real, I'll be back real quick and kind of explain everything. Alrighty guys, so basically just a quick refresher for you. We need to know what variables, constants, parameters, and data types are. Remember variables and constants are boxes or containers or folders or however you want to think of them that hold a certain value for us and that we name to quickly um, refer to later in the program when we need them. Now remember basically when we assign or when we initialize a variable or constant, depending on what we're doing, if it's a variable, we'll put var, for like the example I have, var name one equals quotes Tyler. And that basically is holding the quotes Tyler in the box called name one in the memory. Now, a constant could be the same exact thing. We could do let name one equal quotes Tyler, end quote. Now the let would just signify that that actual box shouldn't there that, that box um, cannot change that value later on in the program so no matter what happens once you initialize a constant we can't change that value later in the program so yeah that's basically a constant now a parameter which is the next thing we need to talk about and which you guys might not have gone over yet basically a parameter is I like to think of them as kind of constraints or things that the program needs to operate within. What might be more kosher to what we're talking about is functions. Basically, functions require certain arguments or parameters to, um, to function, for lack of a better term. So when we create a function, we basically tell it, hey, you need this and this, and then once you have this, you need to do this. Basically, for a quick on-the-fly example, I could create a function that takes your first and last name and creates a new variable to hold that that um, the first and last your first and last name. Now, for that function to work, it does need two parameters. It needs one your first name, and second, it needs your last name. Now, the next thing and last thing, kind of to quickly go over, is data types. Now, remember, variables and constants can hold values for us, and depending on what kind of value we want it to hold, will determine the data type it will um, be. It will be categorized as. So, for the example that we used earlier, var name one equals Tyler. That is a string data type. Tyler is a string data type within the quotes. Now, there are data types for integers, which are basically just hold numbers. There are data types for floats, which are basically numbers with decimals. And then a double data type is basically just a number with decimals with a lot more decimal places it can hold versus a float. Now that's pretty much all you need to know in terms of vocabulary. There are some questions I want you to kind of keep in mind as we go through the simulation and those should pop up right about now. Alrighty, so basically these are questions that just to keep in mind as we work through the simulation because we'll have some we'll actually answer these questions at the end and when I was doing the playground and got to the end I was like oh I kind of wish I would have kept these in mind at the beginning um, as I was working through the program so go ahead and just take the next 30 seconds and just read through them kind of keep them in the back of your head um, I think we have 30 more seconds of the slide so if you want to skip ahead go ahead but I will see you guys once the program actually starts All right, so we're actually starting the program now. Now go ahead and pause it and read through this really quick. But the short and simple and sweet of it is 
we are going to use code to manipulate a simulation that the simulation is a, a visualization of a model of how ants forage for food and how their pheromones work. Um, but that's pretty much the, the short and sweet of it. Um, and so go ahead and feel free just to read over. We're gonna jump in here real quick. So actually we got the simulation now actual run, actually running. And now it wants us to just kind of observe how the simulation works. So notice how the ants are just going everywhere. And here you can see the pixels actually changing color. So we got some blue, we got some green, some cyan going on, some yellow. And then you might be able to tell as well, there are some red dots that are kind of white in the middle and they're changing back to red. Now it kind of wants you to basically observe and then basically kind of think of what each visual element represents. And we'll get into that later. Alrighty guys, so next up is the basic parameters. Now remember what we talked about parameters, they are certain values that the function is going to take to achieve its goal. Now here we have two parameters. We have number of ants, which is an integer, and then ant speed, which is a double. Now remember integer is a whole number and double can be a number with decimal places. So we can modify these. Now for the ant speed, we can go one through 200, but we can also do like 100.5. For number of ants, we gotta just do one through 200. We can't have half an ant in this simulation. Now, there's a couple things it does want us to observe. Basically one, how quickly do the ants dissipate and how much of the screen they cover. Also, what happens to when an ant wanders too far like once what happens once it goes off screen let's take a few seconds and see what happens so if you guessed it or maybe not even guessed if you saw it if an ant goes off screen it spawns back in the middle so if it loses track of it it just comes back now we're gonna go ahead and modify these uh, parameters here. Now, quick reminder, what's the number one thing we need to change right off the bat for these parameters to work? I'm gonna take 20 seconds, or just a few seconds, see if you can figure it out before I, I change it. Alrighty, so I hope you guys were able to guess what we need to do first for these parameters to actually do anything to the simulation. Did you guys guess right? Let's see. Yep, we need to remove the comment or the slash the, the slashes so that they're no longer considered comments and then they're actually can be used by the computer. Because as a reminder, any comment is ignored by the computer. Comments are just for the programmers to see to understand what the the last programmer was doing now basically right now we're just going to kind of play around with these values right now i only have five ants and it's a lot more apparent now that when a ant goes off screen it will just get basically put back in the middle so, or for lack of a better term it will spawn back in the middle now cranking up the ant speed a little bit so now we're to 50 ants with the speed of 100, so about 50% of the suggested range. Now, it wants us to note a couple of things. The ants are wandering, and the way that they're kind of randomly wandering, um, or sorry, randomly wandering, is because 
the movement is created by a random number generator so it's basically saying hey computer give me a number and then we're gonna have this ant follow that and then it's gonna basically just keep asking for a random number uh, to dictate the uh, path and the direction of the ants now we could program a path for each individual ant one that would be a lot of work and two it'd be kind of it would break the simulation because we're trying to make a, a realistic simulation and if we had everything programmed individually the likelihood that everything is going to end up going in similar predictable paths would be kind of unrealistic and wouldn't help the the visualization we're trying to create so we're going to do what we they use a random name sorry <laughs> a random number generator to achieve this effect of basically randomness um because ants don't they don't all each individual ant is its own ant and they don't all do the exact same thing um, for any video game players out there you might notice like in a like if you guys play madden or fifa or um any of the sports games nba if you notice in the crowd the npcs will actually will actually basically have their own movement but if you take a look closely at the crowd you'll notice like every three to four npcs will be doing the exact same animation and that's because they're kind of programmed like that there, there's some very like randomness in there a little bit but it, you quickly realize like yeah they're all just following like a couple animations so it's bound to basically end up getting a few npcs that are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time which is can be really annoying kind of immersion breaking so um that's why in this case you know we didn't want to have the ants be predictable they wanted them to be realistic in how they would move so they're doing a randomness to it and then guys go ahead and just feel free to play around with the parameters real quick you know pause the video and just have fun with it for a sec Alrighty, so the next step is basically looking at some more basic parameters, but this time they're going to include the parameter that deals with one, the cell size of each of the pixels in the environment, the number of ants, which we've already dealt with, but we got a couple new ones as well, the pheromone evaporation rate and the pheromone deposit rate. Now let's go over the environmental cell size first. It's the width and height in pixels of each cell in the environment which is kind of self-explanatory but basically the simulate or the, the the visualization that we're getting a display of is going to be separated into um, a grid basically and each grid is going to hold a certain amount of pixels and that will adjust the size of the cell now skipping down to below to the the new ones we basically have pheromone evaporation rate. Now basically that means in units per second how quickly the pheromone leaves that cell. And then the other one is the deposit rate. So basically in units per second, how quickly does that pheromone get added to the cell by the ant? So just think about that really quick. As an, as an ant occupies a cell, it's going to deposit pheromone. and but that pheromone won't last forever, so it's got to have a rate at which it dissipates. Now, I went ahead and removed the comments real quick to get these very or these parameters to activate, and now it's running the simulation. Now, if you guys can tell, what's different from last time is that we are now seeing space per cell, and basically, the bigger the cell, the more pixels it takes up. So I went ahead and just doubled it. And now, remember guys, feel free to play around with this on your own as well. Feel free to put in whatever numbers you are you want to put in. I'm just putting in stuff that I thought of. So right now what I'm doing is I doubled the cell size, I upped the number of ants, and then I'm also going to adjust the pheromone deposit right here in a second. But I want you guys to take a look at what's happening right now. Do you notice how big the pixels are? Or like 
I guess a better better way to phrase it, do you see how big the cells are, like how much color each cell is taking up? And that the reason why they're like the colors are so much bigger now is because the cells are bigger now. So and I went ahead and let's see here. I went back and changed the cell size back to 10 to see what that would do. Um, I reduced the number of ants as well. Now, here's one thing I, I did notice. I was able to actually kind of break the program. When I put the environmental or environment cell size to one, it started really slowing down. Um, and basically what I'm assuming that is due is that basically there are so many cells now. Basically, because basically I put one, so that means one pixel per cell. And there were so many cells that the, pro the program was basically kind of coming to a halt. And then right now I wanna, want you guys to notice is I, I put the deposit rate as lower than the evaporation rate. So that means that they're gonna deposit pheromones, but the pheromones are kind of actually kind of dissolve quicker than they can be added back. So the reason we're only, we're actually seeing any color right now is because right towards the middle the pheromones are the densest as in that that's the the amount of ants in the middle are the most dense and here you can see right now i'm breaking the program by putting one as the cell size and it's basically just it's it's still calculating everything but it's basically can't keep up right now So I went ahead and put the cell size to five, which was half of what it was normally now, because I was trying to understand what exactly was going on with the program at this point. And so I realized basically the cell size too small actually kind of breaks the program. Now, I want you to notice we're still not seeing a lot of color, and that's because the deposit rate was still lower than the evaporation rate. Now I changed it to about five more than the evaporation rate but i think because of the cell size was so small where we weren't actually able to see a lot of color so i went back and upped it to 10 and as you can see right now we are getting some actual color now let me adjust the deposit rate a little bit more let's up it to 75 let's see how that looks so yeah now we can actually see pretty good color um, towards the middle um, it is evaporating pretty quickly still but at least you can kind of see the pheromones being deposited. Now what I want you guys to do is kind of just play around with the values kind of like I have done already and just see how you can affect it. And then so just go ahead and take, you know, like 30 seconds to a minute and just see what you can do with it. Also, I forgot to say, feel free to pause the video at this point to change parameters. That way you can come back once you're ready for the next section. And we're on to the next section, guys. This section is called foraging. Basically, gonna add some more pheromone parameters. Blue squares represent the concentration of the nest pheromone, and green squares represent the concentration of the food pheromone. The nest and food, the color represents the proximity to the source. So the proximity of the nest is what the color represents and the proximity of the food is what the green represents. Now they will mix and form. If blue and green mix, you'll see the bright blue, which means both types of pheromones are present. If yellow and green mix and red, or sorry, yellow is a mix of green and red, which happens as ants discover food and deposit the food pheromone onto the cell with the food source. Ba basically, previously the ants watered aim wandered aim aim aimlessly but here ants react to the scent of pheromones and to the scent of food. 
when they're within range, they can choose to follow the gradient, the direct, basically the direction of increasing intensity. It wants us to observe the behavior of the colony as it finds and exploits food sources. And basically, how do ants decide when to deposit which pheromone? Is the amount they deposit unique? Um, sorry, not unique, but is it constant? And then how does the colony react to multiple food sources is basically the other things it wants us to observe. Alrighty, and now we're going to take a look at adjusting these parameters. So basically, taking a quick look, it looks like so far we have the home pheromone deposit rate, the food pheromone deposit rate, the already. So basically, like I said, we have the home pheromone deposit rate, the food pheromone deposit rate, and then the, um, the evaporation rate for each of those parameters as well. Um, we have environment cell size as well, number of ants. We also actually, I noticed we had two parameters for number of ants. Um, so it's going to be whatever is lower in the, the program is going to overwrite the variable. And then we have ant speed as well. So basically, if you guys can notice, the red ants, when they hit the food source, they actually turn white. And that means they have food and they're trying to bring the food back. Now, we can't really see any color changes going on right now. We can see that certain ants are turning white. So let's go ahead and mess with the parameters a little bit. And like I said previously, go ahead and feel free to, you know, mess with the values yourself as well. Don't just copy what I'm doing, you know. So one thing, this is when I noticed that the number of ants is being overwritten. So I commented that out so it'd be ignored by the computer. And now I'm trying to figure out why we're not seeing a lot of color. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the food pheromone rate to 300. And now we, we started to see some green before I changed. So I, I basically made the deposit rate three times as much as it was at the default value. And now we're actually seeing some color here. Now I'm going to change the environment cell size to make it easier to kind of see what impact the pheromones are having. So I upped it to 15. Now you can see when they grab food, that's when they start depositing the pheromone for the food. And now, as you can see, as they start telling the other, or they start depositing that pheromone, the other ants are like getting a whiff and they're like, oh, there's food that way. So they're all starting to go that way. And that's why, because you're basically, as they, as they are trying to make their way back home, you're getting this cross between the pheromone for nest and the pheromone for food and that's why you're getting the the cyan color right there now as you notice there's a lot of activity near that one food point but they're also hitting the other food points too as the the ants wander away and they're kind of just doing the random thing they will hit the other food points and bring it back home but as you can see, the ants are kind of focusing on that one area, as you can see by the pheromones. Let's see here. So we're gonna go ahead and change the parameters a little bit more. Maybe it looks like we might just re we might be just resetting. Okay. So go ahead and notice real quick the red the red pixels are the food sources. And now you can see that we're kind of hitting if the bottom right hand one is really green, um, and basically a lot of ants are going to that one. They are hitting the top one too, as you can see, but the majority of them are going that way and hitting the bottom one, and they're kind of what I found is they're kind of consuming one at a time. Some of the other ants will hit other food sources and bring it back. But once, because of the pheromones, the, the ants, 
that interact with the pheromone scent for food will head that direction and then make it way back home. As they start running out of food, they'll hit the other food sources as well. And you can kind of see we, we still have a ton of ants on that one spot. My assumption is, is that they're having, they okay, it might, it might have been that they didn't know how to get back home or there was still technically food there. It, it was kind of hard to just see. They're all kind of just wandering now. They're hitting the food spots a little bit, but they're not honestly, they're not kind of swarming like they were. And it might just take a while for them to actually lay enough pheromones for the other ants to realize. It looks like we're going to go ahead and change the deposit rate to 20 just to see what happens when the deposit rate's lower than the evaporation rate. So you still see ants grabbing food, but they're not, like I guess what said, they're not really swarming and we're not seeing a lot of color change either. So they're not able to really communicate because it's evaporating too quickly. So I want you guys to go ahead and kind of just play around with the parameters, basically pause the video, just play around with the parameters and then come back and we'll do the wrap up. But yeah, just experiment, um, keep those questions in you know, your head at the from the beginning of the video and see if you can kind of find a rhyme and reason behind how the colors are changing, what the ants are doing based on how the pheromones are being laid and then just, yeah, just kind of see if, what you can figure out by just observing. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna do the wrap up now. Um, basically, we're gonna go over the questions that I had you guys kind of keep in the back of your head at the beginning. Now, what I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to write down your answers to these questions because I'm really curious what you guys found out after you guys started experimenting with them as well um, during the pauses of the video. But, um, so yeah, go ahead, pause the video, write down your stuff, and then come back, and then I'll go over what I found, basically. You back yet? Are you back? All right, you're back. Okay, cool. So basically, this is, we're just going to go through questions. Um, can you describe the rules for ants' behavior based on your observations? How and when does an ant decide to follow which pheromones? So what I saw was basically the rules for the ants were basically were dependent on the state of the ant. I think what the computer was doing was, does ant have food or is it looking for food? Like that's the two states. Does it have food or is it looking for food? If it's looking for food, it's gonna go away from the nest and then drop the pheromone of nest, basically, right? So that it has a trail to come back with. Once it reaches the food, that state's gonna change and it's gonna basically be like, hey, I do have food now, what do I do now? And I think the rules are once you have food, you need to go back to the nest to bring the food back. So you need to drop food pheromone as you go back to the nest and follow your trail of the nest pheromone. So that's what I observed. The next one is what combinations of parameters did you find that produce successful foraging behavior? What combinations did not produce successful foraging behavior? So basically, what I gathered from this was that if we have too few of ants and the deposit of the pheromone isn't high enough versus the evaporation, the, the, the pheromone won't last long enough for the ants to figure their way back and forth because the thing about having more ants is the density of ants per cell is higher, meaning that the, the amount of pheromone is going to be greater as the amount of ants increase. Now to make up for that, we can just basically make sure that the pheromone gets deposited at a faster rate and we can even lower the evaporation rate so that it can stay in that cell for longer. Um, combinations that did not produce. So like I said, when we, 
when we lower the evaporation rate, or sorry, we increase the evaporation rate higher than the deposit rate, that means the pheromone was actually evaporating quicker than it was being deposited, and so you got ants that were lost and didn't know where to go. Um, let's see. Large impact on the simulation with a small change in their values. As you can see multiple times, if I change the cell environment size to too small, it would basically, I believe, I believe by basically making the cells small enough that it was too many cells for them to handle, or the program to handle, or at least maybe depending on the computer processes or resources, um, but it was basically slowing down the program. So it wasn't able to generate the model at a decent frames for, or a frame rate that was you would able to actually observe the model. So I found that at least a minimum of like five um, for the cell environment size was required for the model to actually function as it was supposed to. Um, let's see. How are the parameters interrelated? For instance, if you decrease the number of ants, can you keep the foraging behavior intact by modifying another parameter? We kind of already talked about this. So if we decrease the number of ants, we need to increase the amount of deposit, right? We need to increase the, or sorry, we need to increase the rate of deposit and we can even lower the rate of evaporation. That would allow, that would allow basically the ants to figure out where they're going easier because the pheromones lasting longer. Um, let's see, what are some hypotheses you can make about the foraging behavior of ant colonies based on your observations of the simulation? For instance, is there a critical number of ants required to produce foraging behavior? I didn't test that too extensively. I would assume that basically you can't just have one ant. You, you, I would say probably you need at least 10 or more ants for like a good, a good functioning model. Anything less than 10, you're not having a lot of people or the ants, because basically when they start, they're going in random directions trying to find food. So if you only have 10, it's gonna really take them a long time to eventually find the food. And then even at that point, they might not have the pheromone last long enough for the other nine ants to figure out where they found food. So it definitely, greater numbers equal better foraging for sure. Let's see, what would you do if you wanted to compare this model with the real world behavior ants? What kind of enhancements would you make to the simulation? So you're not really kind of, they're not really taking in effect like terrain, um, humidity, like temperatures at all, how temperatures would affect. Like, I mean, there is a rate of evaporation, which the humidity, the temperature would affect, but we're not actually seeing those parameters uh, have a direct impact. It's just basically about, uh, it's just one single number right of a rate um, so I'd like to see like temperature and environment play into effect for the uh, model also maybe depending on what food um, it might indicate they might be able to tell um, or find the food quicker depending on what food it is and what kind of scent it's getting off but yeah that's something I would like to see And the last question is, what other questions do you want to answer about ant colony behavior? Um, I don't really have anything else. Um, I'm really excited to see what, excuse me, what you guys put for your questions um, and what you guys observed. I found this simulation really entertaining and just kind of seeing what we could affect, how, or sorry, and how we could affect the program by just changing a few parameters and how those parameters were interlinked. But um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, hopefully, I'll keep making videos like this. If you guys have any feedback, let Sarah know, and she'll, she'll definitely let me know. But other than that, have a good rest of your night, guys, or day. And uh, yeah, take it easy.